Hello and welcome to Future Self Dreaming. My name is Carlos Kukulkan. In the last presentation, I discussed the idea that our psyche or personality consists of many parts of ourselves and how these may manifest in different situations and scenarios and getting to know them therapeutically by forming an inner relationship. Today, I want to further develop this by exploring the idea that we need to learn how to just be with these parts of ourselves as we begin to relate in a different manner than we have previously been accustomed to. In a sense, this is the idea of how to hold space or create a safe container within yourself, a crucible for the alchemical transformation of your inner child. To give you an idea of what I'm referring to in relation to the idea of simply being with these parts of ourselves. In my counseling practice with clients, during sessions, I'm constantly reflecting on any impulses that I may have to do anything for or to change the client, rather than just being with them in the process of holding space for their inner transformation and exploration. An example of this might be noticing how these impulses might arise if I'm not comfortable simply being with somebody else who is experiencing strong emotions, whether these be sadness, despair, anger, or elation. If in my self-reflection, I find myself having the impulse to change anything about the client rather than just accepting them as they are in that moment, Then I acknowledge how I'm feeling, what I might be needing, and I return to just staying present with them and noticing what is arising. So from this awareness of how I am in response to them, I then also have valuable insight that might provide uh, the opportunity, if appropriate, to share my experience of the client and to see how they may respond to this feedback within the dynamic of our relating. This often results in a deeper self-reflection for the client as a result of receiving this feedback about how they are being experienced by somebody else and reflecting on whether this is a common uh, experience of feedback or a new experience. The types of self-reflective questions that I might ask myself may include, what am I sensing in relationship to this person in this moment? What might they be experiencing? What thoughts are they sharing with me about themselves? What feelings are they having and what might they be needing? So these same types of questions can be used to explore the inner reality uh, with the parts of ourselves that we might be experiencing. Learning to relate in this way using the art of self-reflection assists us to simply be with these aspects of ourselves that we might be encountering rather than acting on any impulses that they might, might have to change the situation. Often these impulses are driven by an attempt to control a situation primarily because we might might not feel safe with the feelings that are being encountered. A quote from the infamous founder of the person-centered approach to therapy, Carl Rogers, stated that the curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, then I can change. Self-acceptance is an invaluable quality to cultivate. Rather than responding immediately via a compulsive drive towards action, developing self-acceptance can be a challenging new experience as we learn to simply encounter, be with, and relate with these vulnerable and perhaps wounded parts of ourselves that are needing care and attention. These parts may have developed behavior that is chronically habitualized or habituated rather to respond with an impulse to behave outwardly in a certain way rather than to be related with in the manner of being with these inner parts of the self that have been neglected and continue to be abandoned when emotionally triggered and that respond through an impulse to action that may be an attempt to disperse the energy that's been activated rather than being related with and uh, in a way that can contain and regulate this energy. There's a book that's called Taming Your Outer Child by Susan Anderson, which presents the concept of the outer child, this part of ourselves that has the impulse towards acting out when the inner child is being abandoned rather than being with this inner child to develop a relationship with it and discover what feelings and needs it is having. 
the tendency towards acting out is the same type of early developmental behavior that seeks attention from others when we are wanting our needs to be met. However, as we mature, we learn to outgrow this type of behavior and be able to become emotionally literate and learn to request of others rather than demand or act out in an attempt to have our inner world noticed and attended to. Often when young, acting out is uh, an attempt to have our feelings validated and our needs responded to by somebody else. Sometimes acting out can actually lead towards punishment of that behavior that we are displaying, which may result in learning that some feelings are unsafe to be expressed and causes further self-abandonment. Much of the effect of traumas that result in self-abandonment tend to begin by negating the world of the inner child's feelings and needs, leaving restricted behavioral options, a narrow bandwidth of emotional expression, and limited capacity to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, resulting in feelings of disconnection, alienation, and isolation. When we learn to disconnect from feeling, it may result in a conditioning whereby our behaviors and the feelings that drive them are not viewed as permissible or acceptable, and the attitudes towards these emotions become perpetuated throughout later life. Throughout childhood, acting out behavior is often an attempt to activate others to respond to our needs. And when this does not occur, a multitude of defense responses may ensue, often resulting in a numbing or disconnection from the body and internalized negative emotional attitudes towards ourselves that shut down the heart. In learning to be with and hold these vulnerable aspects of ourselves that are desperately seeking our attention through their impulses towards acting out behavior, we can begin to form a caring, compassionate and empathic relationship with ourselves. We may perhaps ask these parts of ourselves what it is they have to say. What do they want to be heard? What thoughts are they having? What do they look like? What environment are they currently in? How old are they? How are they feeling? What are they needing? And how specifically would they like to receive these needs? As described in the previous presentation, empathy is an experience of attaining an understanding of another person's thoughts, feelings, and experiences from their point of view rather than from our own. There are various manners in which empathy can be provided at cognitive and emotional levels as well as by taking action that shows we care. It's generally important that before we act on the impulse to take compassionate action to assist another that we have established cognitive and emotional empathy with them to establish what it is that will be of greatest benefit for them personally. It's not wrong to want to help somebody by doing something for them. However, We often don't know what it is that that person needs, and so by firstly understanding a person's thinking and sharing their feelings, it puts us in a much better place to be able to actually provide action that will be an appropriate response to that person's needs, rather than just attempting to guess at what they want based on how we may wish things to be if we're in their shoes. Sometimes people utilize a protective mechanism to keep distance from distressing feelings, staying at the level of cognition in the safety of the head. Becoming associated to feelings and locating them in the body can be a challenging new experience because of the sense that it may not be safe to do so or to express these based on previous experiences. Remaining at the level of cognition alone in the head, however, does not bring any internal peace, and people go around and around in mind loops looking to discover meaning or understanding that they hope will resolve these feelings of inner conflict. In my experience, attempting to resolve inner conflict at the level of cognition alone might be likened to the concept of putting the cart before the horse. We are holistic beings and we need to be related with on multiple levels of cognition, emotion and physical dimensions. That's all for today. As always, I hope that you have enjoyed what's been shared in this presentation and taken something of use away for it on your own journey. If you'd like to watch more episodes of Future Self Dreaming, please hit the subscribe button and uh, for information about booking counseling sessions and workshops, you can visit the website futureselfdreaming.com and follow Future Self Dreaming on Instagram and Facebook as well as on YouTube. Thank you. In Lakesh.